Why do you need a variable speed pool pump? Well, it's going to be law soon that filtration pumps need to be variable speed pumps or at least a pump that can meet an efficiency standard of which almost all of the modern day single speed pumps will fail to meet the new efficiency requirement. And so in essence, they're going to just be outlawed altogether and filtration pumps will need to uh, be the entirety of the market. Single speed pumps will be allowed to be maintained to the extent that when they're in place, you can have one that can run, but once it breaks down, that's it. You're not going to be able to service them anymore. You're not going to be able to replace parts or buy new ones anymore for filtration pump applications. And, you know, a lot of people are upset about that. They're, you know, they don't want to spend a lot of money on variable speed pumps, but this is a perspective issue. And here's the reality of the situation. If you have a swimming pool, the filtration pump for your swimming pool uses up to half of the total amount of electricity that your home uses in a month half all of the electricity that you use the pump makes up half of that that is a ridiculously high number and as it turns out the current method that we use for fil filtering swimming pool water is remarkably inefficient we wouldn't allow this level of inefficiency anywhere else in the home and yet here we are you know almost in 2020 and we still have these remarkably inefficient single speed pool pumps dominating the market. That being said, things are going to change, but you're wondering, why do I need one of these things? Like, can't I just take the pump I have and run it only half the day, or maybe even less than that, maybe even eight hours a day only, or less than that? You know, what's the problem? Can't I just do that instead? And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to show you why that single speed pump just can't compare to a variable speed pump. So let's go ahead and get started here. So here we have a super flow variable speed pump and I'm going to start it up and I'm going to ramp it all the way up to the maximum RPM, 3,450 RPM. Here we go. We're running on inch and a half plumbing here and let's take a look at the electrical usage. pump is drawing almost 10 amps and is using 2.27 kilowatts of power. What that means is if you ran this pump for one hour, you'll have used 2.27 or 2.25 kilowatts of electricity. Let's take a look at the flow rates that we're achieving right now. That looks to be just over 80 gallons a minute, perhaps 82 gallons per minute. So the thing is, is that that is a lot of power. There's also a lot of system inefficiency happening. Water doesn't travel efficiently at that speed. So when you turn down the speed, that the motor is running at, there's a couple of things that you're benefiting from. So right now, you can hear the RPM of the motor changing. I've just dialed it down to 1730 RPM, and that is approximately half what we were just running at. So remember before, it was drawing almost 10 amps, 2.25 kilowatts of power. So now we've gone down to 1.76 amps, that's, that's a massive drop. We're at just under 360 watts of power or 0.36 of a kilowatt. So that's 2.2 kilowatts compared to 0.36, just by turning down the speed by half. Let's take a look at the flow rate because flow rate is what really matters in these equations here. So the flow rate is substantially less as would be expected but what we see here is it's, it's pretty close. So before we had 80 to 82, here we've got 38 to 40. I mean, 40 is being generous, but just, just because it's an easy number to work with, we're pretty close, pretty close to half the flow rate 
that we were getting before. Okay, so half the flow rate, what, what's the points of all this? Well, the points of all of this is that we turned down the motor by half, the flow rate turned down by half, but the power consumption went down by, what is that? It's somewhere between six and eight times reduction in the amount of power that we're using just by turning down the motor. So what happens here is as you turn down an electric motor, there's an exponential decrease in the amount of power that it consumes to perform its function. And that is the scientific principle that you're capturing with a variable speed motor. And that's why, you know, turning off your single speed pump for X amount of hours per day, it really just can't compare because it still uses a massive amount of power to run at that very, very high speed, 3,450 RPM. And it uses so much less when you start to dial down the RPMs. And we're only at half. We can go down further from there, can and should. If you're properly scheduling your variable speed pump for maximum electrical savings, we would end up running it for long periods of time where likely it's even less RPM than that for even further electrical savings. And that's why in total, it's actually a good thing that these things are becoming law and that you're gonna have to have one of these because they're so much more energy efficient. And honestly, almost all the polar bears are dead. And if we don't do something, they're all gonna be dead. So that's why you need a new variable speed pump for polar bear conservation. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.